Let's go, sir. You come in more here. But I don't have to turn much to see you. Are you saying, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you know. Mm-hmm. So we on later? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here doing a live to, of course, we're trying to do a Monday live, and that's to send out some information and answer some of the questions that we get over the weekend. Um, one of the... One of the video, videos that people reacted to was the video I did on personal hygiene and the importance of personal hygiene. And I think I should be doing more on it because some persons, they, they saw the information and they were asking questions about it. And it's obvious that if you're going to engage in something that is sexual, you need to be clean. But let's deal with cleanliness before engaging in anything sexual. If you meet someone, and you're having a conversation with them, there's an interaction, there's a physical interaction. You're physically close to the individual. So when that person is speaking with you, you are going to be about a meter apart. So obviously if the person does not take care of their personal hygiene, you're going to pick up on it because you're going to actually get a scent coming from the person and does not taking care of themselves for that particular day or they're in the habit of not taking care of their personal hygiene, you are going to pick up on it. Now, sometimes a person, they are fearful of using certain types of deodorant and other things because of the chemicals that are in it. But there are things that you can do naturally to ensure that your body does not emit that odor. One of it is the diet that you have, the things that you eat. The things that you eat will determine your perspiration. It will determine the scent of your perspiration. The things that you do, the physical activities that you do, will also determine that. Some persons sweat profusely because they are in the hot sun. They may be in a vehicle that is not air-conditioned. And they may be hustling. And because of that, they tend to sweat. Some persons are nervous. And because they are nervous, they will also sweat. But if you don't take care of your personal hygiene, meaning taking a shower, using soap or a body wash to cleanse your skin, scrubbing the areas that are going to build up the odor. Now, we're not talking here about pheromones. We're talking about bad odor that emits from your body. Now, I spoke about sweating. So if you're sweating, a highly seasoned, lots of onions, garlic, going to come out through the pores of your skin. But let's backtrack a bit. If a person is a smoker, you can tell immediately that that person is a smoker when they walk into a room. Because you can smell the nicotine on their clothing. But you can also smell the nicotine on their skin. Because if that person sweats, you can actually smell the person. And you smell an aroma of nicotine and ashes and things that are not conducive to you wanting to have a conversation with that person. So a lot of us are not aware of these things. When I mean us, I mean people in general, because they don't think about it. But again, smoking, poor diet, things that you consume, the interaction that you have outside and the things that you're doing outside will also create that, I don't want to use a strong word, but that stench that you will get from the person. Now, Persons who take care of their body odor. Now, let's, let's, let's deal with something first. If you have a scent coming from your feet, there are things that you can do that you can put in your shoes and whatnot to eliminate that. Baking soda, for example. There are foot powder. There are things that you can do to prevent that sweaty, what we call in Trinidad, that toe jam smell. So you can take care of that. Again, personal hygiene, making sure that you clean your feet, making sure that you air out your shoe whenever you can, put any powder in your shoes to make sure that they don't smell. Because a shoe is an enclosed environment, and you, some shoes are not breathable because you don't want, to walk, want if you walk in a puddle of water, the water seeps into the shoe. And also, if the shoe gets wet, that will also create that, that odor. So you don't want that. But let's take it another step. 
Your body lets out natural pheromones, and pheromones is what attracts the opposite sex. Pheromones is not something that smells. It doesn't give off an odor. Your reptilian mind and your oh, sorry, your reptilian brain picks up on that pheromone, that chemis chemistry that is sent out by the person. Now, some young ladies, when they are on their period, you can tell because body odor changes also. I wonder how many young ladies realize that or know that. But if that person also eats a lot of highly seasoned food, which we do in the Caribbean, of course, and they consume a lot of onions or garlic, their scent changes and it becomes more pungent. So that person, the young lady especially, who has that issue with a body odor change during her period time is going to have an issue because of the food that they consume. So those are the things that you need to be aware of. Easily to get, easy to get rid of. Make sure you shower. Make sure you apply whatever you need to apply to your body. Make sure you take care of your underarm. I mean, if you have hair under your arm, it's going to trap the smell. If you have hair on your vagina, the very same thing happens. That's why some women like to trim it or keep it cut short or even shave the area. But I noticed that unshaved vagina is making a comeback. You know, after the 70s, the 80s, the hair around the vagina, the pubic hair around the vagina just disappeared. And of course, around the, the penis and the scrotum also. So, if those things are contributing to your overall bad personal hygiene, you have to take care of it. And you must be aware. So, if, if you are not aware, ask a friend. Ask somebody that you trust. Say, hey, listen, do I have let off a smell? Um, my period is coming. And do I have a high odor? Or oh, I notice every time I shower, even though I show, I still just get this funny feeling. But remember, you're smelling yourself all the time. So you really don't really, you, do, you don't really smell yourself. So somebody will be able to do that. They will pick up on the odor. And if it's a fall over or, or a stench or, or something that is offensive, they can tell you. And then you can do the remedial step to make sure that that doesn't happen. But the number one thing for me is when a person has bad breath, halitosis. And I'll tell you why. When people speak with you, I like to make eye contact and I like to be face to face with a person when I'm speaking with them. And if I'm speaking to someone and their mouth is not smelling good, it has a stench to it, I am not appreciating any kind of conversation with that person because I am trying to figure out how not to talk to the person because I don't want the person talking to me because of the bad breath. So, it's a simple process to take care of your breath. Now, this is all pre-sexual, you know. This is just two persons meeting. You're meeting someone casually or you're meeting someone to have a, have a drink at a pub or wherever. But the odor is something that can deter you from having that conversation with him or her. Now, the worst thing in my book is a woman who has bad breath. That is a terrible thing in my book. Now, this may not be so for everyone, but it is for me. One of the things that I noticed, and I've been in the porn industry for many, many years. I've, I've done the circuit. I've, I've been there when they're making movies and whatnot. And one thing that I've noticed, that women who have foul breath, they also have a white tongue. They don't scrape their tongue. That's the majority of the time, that women who have foul breath, they don't scrape their tongue. Their tongue is white. Some of the movies, when you're looking at them, you'll actually see the woman's tongue is white. How could you kiss somebody who doesn't scrub their tongue? Who doesn't scrape their tongue and also have bad breath now if you're brushing your teeth is one thing and i'm not a dental hygienist to tell you how to brush your teeth and all those things you should know how to do those things it's not difficult there are many videos on that taking care of your teeth taking care of your mouth taking care of your breath and how to scrape your tongue some person use a brush to brush their tongue some person use a scraper to scrape their tongue but these are the things that you learn when you're growing up Nobody has to teach you that. And if in your old age you don't know what to do, then find out. Look at a video. Speak to someone. Find out what you should do to take care of your breath. Can constant bad breath be a medical condition? Yes. That's, uh, yes. Okay. yes. Constant bad breath can be a medical condition. And that what that does is you're actually having foul odor coming from the gut and radiating upwards. 
And that's because the person is not taking care of the enzymes in their body. Now, there are many things that you can do that you can use to control the bacteria between here and here in your gut. So there are simple pills that you can take. It's available at all the pharmacies and whatnot that you can take to prevent that odor from what you call it backing up and coming out through your mouth. So if the foul scent that is coming from a person's mouth doesn't radiate from the teeth or the tongue, but it's coming from the throat and within, that person cannot clean hair and expect that the scent wouldn't come out. So they have to start taking care of their diet. They have to start taking care of the inside. What are you doing to prevent that? Probiotics, for example, is something that you should be using. Probiotic puts a good enzyme on the butt and get and you have to control the bad enzyme and it helps with the digestion and it also helps with that halitosis or that bad breath that is coming out that is radiating so understanding these things is important for any individual especially if you want to get into a relationship with someone you don't want a relationship falling apart because of bad personal hygiene you don't want a, a relationship ending simply because you don't take care of the simple things in life. Under your arm, the scent that you radiate. No, you don't have to go and buy expensive cologne or perfume to smell good. There are things that are available that will allow that. As a matter of fact, there are some oil-based colognes that are being sold now and oil-based perfumes that a person can use to change or smell nice. Don't you know how wonderful it is to stand next to someone and they're smelling good? Think about it. If you enjoy that, think about what the person who is next to you would enjoy about you. So you need to do that. You need to take care of that. That is you. So now we're getting into the conversational part of it. So you're conversing with someone and you're a smoker, for example, or you have eaten saltfish, smoker, you know, those things, onions and those things that cause your mouth to smell. Sucking a mint alone wouldn't help you. you know? And this is what a lot of people, they think that if they suck a mint, it's going to eliminate the odor. But if the odor is radiating from inside of you, it's going to come out anyway. So that is not going to mask the scent that is coming out of your mouth. And if you can actually taste what you have eaten, obviously it's still there. If you're still tasting it, it's still there. So if you're talking to someone, obviously whatever you have eaten, they're going to be smelling it through you, through your mouth. So these are the things that you must be aware of. So you're talking to someone, you're smoking, but you're a regular smoker, you, are, you smoke all the time. Obviously, everything that comes out is laced with nicotine and the smoke scent. So the person may not want to be close up with you talking, but you may want to be up in the person's face talking to them. And they may be trying to pull away. And many a time, you'll see that. A person may not want to tell the other person that, hey, I don't really want to talk to you and be close to you. But because of that conversation and maybe the respect that they have for you, they would want to, they'll, they'll still listen to you, but they're pulling away from you. And you don't want that. And you must be able to pick up on body language. If people, if a person is doing those things, pick up on the body language. Now, if you have fresh, clean breath and you suck a mint, it only enhances your breath. If you have fresh, clean breath and you don't consume things that are going to make your breath foul as you go along, obviously it's going to remain fresh and clean. Now, drinking water is very important. Keeping the mouth hydrated is also important. Keeping the throat hydrated is also important. So these are the things that you must be doing in order for you to maintain that balance in your pH and your body odor. The body, the, 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 the scent that is emitting from your mouth. So those are the important things. Now, as you go along in the relationship, you've just met somebody, um, you know, starting a relationship, you're ordering drinks, you're having drinks and whatnot. There are things that people react to. There are certain things that doesn't mask 
that internal odor that is coming out from within, within you. It's like an eruption, a constant eruption that is coming out this way. It's not going down. It's coming out, up through the attic, not down in the basement. So alcoholic beverage also can contribute to that scent becoming so mixed up that it's worse. But there are some alcoholic beverage that also helps in curtailing it. So be aware of those things and what you will react to. Juices. Again, we come back to water, coconut water, pineapple juice. Things that soothe the body, you want to consume that. Lemonade. Also a very important factor, especially if you have, if you have a, a stomach, a stomach issues. Some persons who have stomach issues will realize milk don't really help. Consuming milk will not help you. You need something like a lemonade. You need especially pure lemonade. You, you don't need sugary one or water. And then again, you have to watch your sugar content. The amount of sugar that you consume, that also affects the pH balance in your body. So taking care of your personal hygiene, first and foremost, you must be aware. You must be aware of how you smell, how you come across to other people. If your mouth is emitting a foul stench and the person does not want to be close to you. Moving on. Of course, if you are having beverages, alcoholic beverages, and you become, you know, intoxicated, you may want to get closer to the person. And there are some persons who, when they're talking, they start to spit. Mm. So you know, happens a lot. Right. So, you know, they're saying, say it, but don't spray it. So, the, here you are, again, especially that we have come, up, come out of a pandemic where they tell you, don't be close to persons and whatnot. And we still have the COVID in the air. So it's, it's still being transmitted left, right and center. Why are you doing that? Especially if you have drunk a lot and you, you want to be in person face and talking to them and the spit is flying all over. Learn to control that. Understand your body and what it's doing. Learn where you have lost the control and where you have to backtrack a bit. Where you have to cool it with doing those things. The alcohol, if it's becoming too much and you're losing control, why do you want to lose control when you can have control and be able to control the environment and make the person, not make the person feel uncomfortable? So the discomfort is one of the things that we were talking about. Some people are very uncomfortable conversing with someone that gives out that body odor that, you know, cause them to want to pull away from them. But, you are in that situation where things are going well for you and the person and you want to engage in some sort of sexual play. Now, if the person is also intoxicated as you are, she or he may not be thinking about that. So let's get back to the she now. We talk about when a woman is around her period her cycle. She's about to menstruate. The change in the smell while she's on her period her body odor changes also, so you will have that. But then you also have women who insist on wearing panty shields all the time. And a panty shield is actually a piece of plastic. There is a piece of plastic. There is something there that does not allow anything to seep through. And if nothing is seeping through, how could air get through mm -hmm. to reach the vagina? And for the vagina to maintain a certain pH balance, you cannot stifle it. So if you're stifling your vagina by wearing a panty shield, there's no need to wear a panty shield. Panty shield is a commercial thing. So somebody's making thousands of dollars by you, telling you you need to wear a panty shield. Right? For, for thousands of years, women went around without panty shield. Panty shield is a new thing. Maybe not even 10 years old or 15 years old. I don't know the exact date, but I know it's something that some smart genius came up with and said, yeah, what? Let me tell them women they need to protect the panty. But a panty is to protect your vagina and a panty is to protect the outside environment from being contaminated by secretions from the vagina. That's what it is. That's what a panty is. So you don't need a panty shield. Because when you take off a panty, a woman will very rarely would want to wear that again the next day. I don't think women would want to do that. Yeah. Let's say right. we would hope that it's rare. Let's hope right. that they don't want to. Right, because in 
I know as a man, when I take off my jockey shorts, that's it. My shorts come out in the evening time, that's it. When I'm home, it goes into the, the wash basket. So if you know you have a clean body, why do you need to wear panty shield? You see, we have been brainwashed for so long into thinking things, Com especially because it's made in a commercial and it's projected that you need to wear this. Why do you need to wear this? If you're stifling your vagina, the vagina is going to develop an uh, imbalance in the pH. You may have an odor coming from your vagina now and you can't say why. I feel That's like um, most women wear panty sheets because it helps um, when you're discharging. Okay, but for years women used to discharge into their panty. You don't need to wear a panty shield. There's no justification for wearing a panty shield unless you're bleeding. But if you, of course, if you're menstruating, you will wear a pad or you'll wear a tampon. And um, they also have sweet smells on them. Can that contribute to the odor as well? That will contribute to you getting an infection in your vagina. Okay. Because you're not supposed to have something sweet. For example, spray perfume around your vagina. It's all commercial. If I was the inventor of that, I would hush my mouth. I want to sell a thousand tons of it. It's like, okay, let me, let me give you a good example. Most women would have a period for seven days. Mm -hmm. They sell you a pack with six, five or six. That wouldn't, that wouldn't last the seven days. No, but why do they do that? So you could come back and buy No, because you have to buy two. Yeah, two. <laughs> I'm more than likely you wouldn't have the other pack by the end of the month, the following month. True. You'll say that this thing is good, you'll throw it away. And you'll buy two fresh pack. Yeah. It's all about making money. That's what it is. The bottom line is about making money. So panty shields and panty liner and panty uh, and vagina spray and vagina, all these sweet smelling things for your vagina is all a gimmick for you to spend money. That's okay, all like it is. Some women are also insecure because the vagina is not supposed to smell sweet or like cookies or... You know, and a mm -hmm. lot of them are insecure about their natural smell. So they get these products and wear these things to mask the scent. Right. And the natural body odor is the pheromones that attract the male. Okay. They come back again. Where so we go around in a full circle where we are trying to mask the natural body odor. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about a false stench. I'm talking about the natural body odor of the vagina. You're trying to mask that with a panty shield or a spray or some sort of chemical around the vagina that's not supposed to be there. So you are only contributing to your ill health or you're contributing to that change in the pH of the vagina. You are contributing to that. And when you get an infection or an STI or a yeast infection, you're wondering why. But you have given yourself that because you're not taking care of your own vagina. You're not giving it time to breed. You're not... Okay, let's say, for example, you have a heavy discharge. I could understand that you're having a heavy discharge. Well, if you're having a heavy discharge, don't wear a tongue. Mm -hmm. Wear a panty. That's the difference. Invest in panties because you know you're having a... a, a the gossip, the, the piece that goes on it, there's an extra layer there for that. That is what that extra layer is for. Okay. But if you want to wear tongues and you're having a heavy discharge, even if you put a panty shield over it, what it's going to do? Form a circle like this and it's going to be rolled up almost like that and you have something solid between your vagina. How could that be comfortable? Exactly. It, it would not. So when you wear a panty that is broad based at the, at the, where, where the vagina goes, it cushions and, and, and traps everything there. It's common sense. But a lot of women, they want style. And because of style, they, they do themselves an injustice. That is the same thing with guys. Guys want to wear tight jockey shorts so the package will show. Tight pants and tight jockey shorts. That's not recommended for a man. God made man in such a way that your scrotum, your balls, have to hang. If it does not hang, it does not produce what it's supposed to produce in the way it's supposed to produce. That's why a lot of men today have issues with low sperm count and testosterone deficiency. They contribute to their own problem. 
you're supposed to waste something that allows the balls to drop in heat and go up in coldness. But if the ball is constantly against the body, the temperature changes and it does not function properly. So we contribute to our own problems. It's not only the sweat and the, 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 the change in the pH down there, but we're talking about that heat from the body. Again, God in his wisdom, whoever he or she may be, uh, said, hey, balls, hang down there. Well, not so far down, hang there. So that it moves about, it breathes, breathes pass over it. That contributes to their inability to make children before. Low sperm count. I wouldn't say the inability to make children. Low sperm count. Because low sperm count will prevent you from impregnating someone. Okay. So, again, we contribute to our own problems. And I see it as a sexologist all the time. There are many guys, when you ask them, they want to wear jock strap and they want to wear tight jockey shorts because they want to show their balls, they want to show their, their penis. They want to show. But when they stand up, it's still showing because everything is jammed up against you. You're supposed to have it free. It's supposed to be there to move around. It's the same thing that causes bent penis. When your penis to the side, what you think after you get erection is penis is like that. It's no longer like that. It gets a curve. Yeah, it gets a curve. It gets a it gets an angle. It angle your eye because or some fellas believe in putting your penis under the balls. The penis was never meant to be under the balls. It was never meant to be there. The penis is meant to hang over the balls. This is how the penis is. The balls is under here. When you do this. And put the penis under here. You're doing yourself an injustice. It's a disservice to yourself. So it's not only the woman, it's also the guys. Long time when you wear, when you, there was something called dragon draws. I don't know if you all know about that. Men no. used to wear dragon draws, draws. Okay. Right? They call it, well, we call it dragon draws because I think that was a brand. You know, they turned out everything yeah. that was a brand became the name. <laughs> right? So men would be ashamed to go and buy dragon draws because their grandfather used to wear that and their father used to wear it. So they don't want to wear dragon draws. But it was the proper thing to wear. Right? And a draws was like a short... I know men who used to walk around in their drawers. And, well, if you're walking around in your jockey shorts, it's, it's not acceptable. But long ago, people used to walk around in their drawers. In their house, they're in their drawers. They come out in the yard, they come out in their drawers. Right? The drawers used to have two fasteners by the, by the, by the penis area there. Mm -hmm. The crotch area, and you just unfasten and you do, you do. But that allows the balls to hang and it allows the penis to, to rest over the, the, the balls or the scrotum and be natural. But then you started to have jockey shorts that started to hold the, 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 the scrotum and the penis. But that grab it, it just holds it there. I think it all has to do with fashion. Fashion, correct. But fashion kills. Uh, um, fashion destroys. So the um, boxers and well, the boxers is dragon draws. Yeah, um, not only that, but nowadays the trend is tight pants. So <laughs> right. So if you talk way. about tight pants, tight drawers, right? And men, they also have bikini for men. You're not on the beach. You don't have to wear speedo under your clothing on a daily on a daily basis. You wear that to the beach if you want to show off your package, right? But you should allow your balls to hang and swing free. You should allow the, the air to pass through the area. Oh, no, man, come on, guys. You know the hot day if the breeze passes on your balls, I'm going to do it So why are you suffocating it? You got a little tickle from the breeze. Right. You feel that nice little chill and you feel that, that, that you, you know that something is happening down there and you... You, you, you're sure that when you pass here and there's no slime and, 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 and gunk yeah. or muck between your balls and your, 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 your leg yeah. later on because there's muck that builds up. We all, we have dead skin in our body that we let out every single second of our living life, you know. Yeah. When you lie on your bed, the amount of dead cells, are, that's why you have things like bed bug, they go, they, they're feeding on your dead skin. Mm -hmm. You're constantly feeding parasites and water through your dead skin and if you allow those dead skin to accumulate in a particular area because you have a tight panty or a tight drawers it's going to believe some muck when you scrape it like this you'll get muck under your fingernail and that muck will have a smell also, yeah um, that's the that's the look that uh, chafing and rubbing as well of the skin right so the responsibility is yours 
to ensure that those things don't happen. You have to make sure that you have, you must know you. And not because your girlfriend wearing a, a tongue panty that's sticking up in her butt, right? And a panty shield that makes no sense because, again, it, it, this cylinder will form down there. It's like, you know, the, those things that they put over a wire yeah, to, yeah. to protect the wire? Or you, 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 you run speaker wire in your car and, thing and you put this nice little curly thing <laughs> around it. That is the most uncomfortable thing you can have between your legs. So if women stop to think and they understand that they are underwear that you can wear for certain circumstances, Again, if you wear a pad, you will not wear tongs or you will not wear a slim cut panty. You will wear something to hold that in place. You don't want it falling out. Now, we move from that and we move on to tampons. But again, it's controversial that they, they have found chemicals in certain tampons that cause you to bleed longer. So you have to buy more tampons. <clears throat> it's sucking here. Also, the tampons are actually inserted inside the vagina and it also has a sweet smell, so that and all can contribute. Again, to you're right. You do not want that sweet smell in the vaginal area. You do not. If you allow that to happen, you are going to change the pH in your body. It's the same thing when a person thinks that they have to douche all the time. A woman only needs to douche out once a month if she, well, only needs, not needs to, she should only do it once a month after a period is done. And it's a simple douche. Water with one tablespoon of vinegar. <clears throat> douche out if you need to douche out. But do not douche out every time you have sex. The body is self-cleaning. It does that. If you have an infection, that's something different. If you have a yeast, if you have yeast buildup, that is something different. If you were wet, on, for example, you go to the beach. You ladies like to do this. You go to the beach, you don't carry a change of clothes. The water looking so that you go into the water, the water is wet. So you get soaked. Your bathing trunk or your panty or whatever you're bathing is wet. You leave the beach and you're heading home with wet clothing on. What are you going to do? You're going to give yourself an STI. You're going to get a urinary tract infection from that. Wearing wet clothes is not recommended for anyone. Yeah. Right, and then to have those who will take a quick pee in the ocean. Well, yes, in the pool. Yes, but again, if you are aware of your body, if you know what is going to affect you, do not do it. The responsibility is yours. No one has to preach to you that this is what needs to be done. Why do I have to sit here? Well, of course, it's educational, so I'm giving you the education. But why would you have to listen to me to keep your mouth clean? Why would you have to listen to me to keep your vagina clean? Why would you have to listen to me to keep your penis clean? Men also, we can, can we go in between the women and the men, so we come back to the men. Most men with foreskin has something that forms between the foreskin and the corona, the head of mm -hmm. the penis. It's called spankma or cheese. Is that a white? Is that white substance? Right. Yes. Well, the common name is cock cheese okay. or spankma. How difficult it is for you to pull back your head, of, the skin of the foreskin of the penis, Take some water and wash it out. And you don't need soap. You don't need anything with perfume. You don't need to... Anyway, I, I, I'm sure when fellas, if they spray their penis out with perfume, they know it is burnt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure about that. Because the head of the penis has 12,000 nerve endings. Mm -hmm. And this is the head. Let's say... Well, there's nobody with a big head. Let, let, let's use... This is about the, head of a, the size of a head of a penis. Correct? Mm -hmm. What's the size of a clitoris? Yeah, I'll say like a okay. It's a like that. Mm -hmm. So this compare with this. This have 12,000 nerve ending. How much does this have in your estimation? This has 12,000. How much would this have? About One guess. 6,000. You? 10,000. Okay. A couple hundred. The clitoris. <laughs> Has double what this has, 24,000. This big surface has 12, and the small surface, that is why it's so sensitive. Why you feel all your vagina so sensitive? Why you feel all your clitoris so sensitive? It has more nerve ending than the penis head. So, the sensitivity, but thank God, the woman, when they pull back the clitoral hood, there's nothing to clean. Mm -hmm. A simple water does wash out the vagina and wash out the outside of the vagina. But the 
reason why our vagina is so sensitive is because the clitoris has more nerve ending than the head of the penis. I did not know that. Well, you learned yeah. something <laughs> today. But um, just as watching a video, I'm not knocking nobody kink. Eh? Everybody have their own own kink. Yeah, I call it that because a young lady was saying she like men who have that on them, who have that belt. Yes. On them. And she plays with it. There are persons who enjoy the spectrum of a man, especially if it's their man and they know what. There's a person who enjoy. There's that's how there are people who enjoy scat play, playing around with one feces. There are persons who enjoy that. Uh, there, there's no knocking anybody. You for every rule, there's the exception to the rule. So I am not talking to the person who enjoy the spectrum of their partner. I'm talking about the guy who has spectrum build up or the cheese build up around the penis. Clean the damn thing, pull back the skin and wash it out. Every time you go to the bathroom, you should. Right. But, okay, most of the time you're not a, you, you But take a piece of toilet paper and wipe it. Just as how you will wipe your vagina and women. Women should know not to wipe from the back, come forward. They should wipe from the front, go back. They should know that. That should be taught to all young ladies. Don't ever wipe from the anus, come forward, because you'll bring bacteria from the anus into the vaginal area and it will cause an infection. And that's the reality of it. So the same thing with a man, you go to urinate, well, how hard it is to tear two squares of toilet paper and just wipe the head and, and throw that in the, in the toilet. Or before you even go as a man, before you go to use the washroom, wash your hands first. You have to wash, and I was about to say wash that. Your hands You're right. first and then. Wash your hands first before you touch your penis because whatever germ or bacteria you pick up with your hands, mm -hmm. it will be transferred to the penis. Now think about it. Ladies, I am a street vendor. Mm -hmm. I am a vendor, not a street. Let me not use the word street vendor. A vendor. I'm handling money. Right? Mm -hmm. I meet you. Nice girl. <laughs> Are you going to do a quick thing? And I take the same hand without washing it and put it in your vagina. All the bacteria pass through from the money until... Money is the but... most unclean thing there is. Mm -hmm. Money is filthy. You have no idea where money has been. If a dollar drops in the ground, do you leave it and throw it in the bin? You know, pick it up right, you pick up the money and you put it in your pocket. No matter where, if the dollar fall in the drain, you'll pick it up and put it in your pocket. So you have transferred germs from the floor. It's like me taking my hand and rubbing it on the floor. Mm -hmm. So I've touched the dollar, or the five dollars, or the hundred dollars. Let me use a hundred dollars. People say a dollar who are no worth a hundred dollars. I pick up the hundred dollars, I complete up and I push it to my pants pocket. And I meet my sexy lady, my girlfriend, or whoever. I wash my hand and I decide to touch her up all over her body and stick my finger in her vagina. <laughs> what are you doing to her? Yeah. You are transferring germs that was on the ground to her vagina. Yeah. How many of us stop to think about that? Persons just feel it's a big deal to a man go and pee and he touches you with the urine. Urine is antiseptic. If you get a wound, you're the forest or anywhere and get a wound. As a matter of fact, if you ever get a cut, take some of your urine, not my own, your <laughs> urine. And apply it there and see how fast it will heal. Mm. Urine is antiseptic to your body. Mm. So if you do a tattoo, well, I see you have a tattoo there. <laughs> pee in a jar, take some of it and rub it on the tattoo, and you see how fast it will cure. It will cure faster than you put in any antibiotics on it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the rhyme from orange skin. And... No, it's not. It's greater than that. It's greater than that. Urine is antiseptic to your body. It's greater than that. There's a belief that if you drink your first urine in the morning, you put back all the antibodies to everything that you have in your body. You know? I've heard that. There's a belief of that, and there are persons who drink the first urine. As a matter of fact, there's, there's a sophisticated name for it, even a godly name for it, for those who don't know. There, and it's not a cult. It's persons who believe that, they, and, and, and it has been proven, that drinking your first urine puts the antib antibodies back into your body. And there are persons who do that, and I'm talking about important persons who have done that. There was a prime minister who used to do that, not in Trinidad, outside of Trinidad, because it, was, it, it made international news, because he talked about it. But there are persons who will use urine to wash their face, and of course afterwards use water, mm -hmm. right? I remember once I was looking at a movie, I can't remember the movie, but I remember the two stars, um, Ethan Hawke and somebody else, two good stars, Denzel Washington, I think. No. Well, anyway. And the guy was, his hands were supposed to be callous and he would pee on his hands and do so. And he said, that's what, what keep my hands off and supple. Okay. 
And he told them that. When he, when he done, he was, I think he was playing, um, doing something with a bull, right? And when he done, he pee on his hand and he do this and he tell them, yes, it's what keep my hands off. But that, that came about for, based on some science. It didn't come about because they wanted to put that in the movie. It was somebody who did the research and understand that. That's why they put it into the movie. So you are educated about it. So when you all, ew, when you hear about P, what a dollar bill, a nasty dollar bill, some people are taking the money and put it in their mouth. That's nasty. And you don't know where the money come from. If they come from yes, right. You, you, you don't know where the money came from. Right. Yes. Exactly. So you're transferring germs with the everyday things that we do. So if you meet your boyfriend or you meet your girlfriend, make sure you wash your hands because you don't know what you were touching. You might be touching a handrail that maybe some homeless person had just touched. You don't know if you're going into a max who just came from the seat that you were sitting in. Mm -hmm. Do you know? No. So right. So you could be transferring germs all the time. So personal hygiene is understanding this and making sure that you don't find yourself in a situation where that happens. So the guy with his penis, you wash your hands, you go and urinate, and you wash again. If you have a, a heavy accumulation of smegma on your penis, you pull back the head of your penis when you're done pee, you wipe it with a piece of paper, you, you, you get rid of the extra urine, and you're done. Do that. Some men don't even care about their penis. <laughs> unless... It starts giving them trouble. Mm -hmm. When they get phimosis and they can't pull back the skin and they cannot have sex, then they want to see Dr. Raj. They want the cure because we have the cure for phimosis. When they have an issue with smegma buildup and a partner no longer wants to have sex with them, they will call me, Dr. Raj, what can I do? Wash your penis. I can't wash it for you. I will not wash it for you. Get like somebody I'm... to clean it for you. Some people don't bathe or wash themselves as often as they should. Well, some people overbathe and overwash themselves. That is something we because water is cheap in Trinidad. Because water is cheap in Trinidad, people want to bathe two and three and four times a day. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is not recommended. You get rid of the oils and the emulsions from your body and whatnot. You don't want to do that. So, yes, there are those who underdo it and there are those who overdo it. Do what you are comfortable with. Right? You know you're out all day, you're hot and sweaty, you go home, you take off your clothes, you, you breeze off. As a matter of fact, I recommend that if you're in your room and you have your privacy, be naked in your room. Yeah. Cool down, yeah. You're going and sleep, sleep without a panty, sleep without a drawers. And this goes for not only men, but women and men. Women and men. Yeah. No, I'm talking about women and men. But some persons will talk, talk about some night like, demon will come on you. <laughs> that is pure crap. <laughs> Pure, pure crap. Succumbus and incumbus yeah, and this bus and that bus. Those are pure crap. That's things that people just make up. They just make it up. Because they have nothing better to do. Mm -hmm. I know I enjoy sleeping naked. It is real good. If the house burned down, so be it. I run out with my naked. I run out naked. I, I, so be it. <laughs> we'll see, see. But the point is, is that what is best for you as an individual? You wake up in the morning. Everyone's supposed to go to the bathroom to do their ones and twos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to wash out their mouth, get rid of the plaque buildup around your teeth, right? Clear their throat of all the film and things that builds up in the night and you spit it out and you clean your, you clean your breath. I hate to see in movies and what that people now wake up and kissing one another. Yeah. That is disgusting to me. Morning breath. Yeah, morning breath is not a nice thing. But the movies glorify it. But of course, they didn't, they didn't sleep at, at 12 hours or 8 hours and get up with one another. There are two actors and actresses, or two actors or two actresses who, were sleep, who just came there and lied down and pretend they were sleeping for, for 8 hours, <laughs> but I'm, it was only 2 seconds. I'm pretty sure they brushed their teeth before Of course! They <laughs> so, why are you following the dirty, nasty things you've seen on television and movies? Yes. For example, a new trend in American shows is the child coming from outside and going straight on their bed with the shoes. If you know how that is disgusting. I, I your that. shoes is to protect your feet. Your shoes is to prevent germs from getting into the house and, and on your body. And you walking off the street and going on your bed with your shoes, you're damn nasty. Yeah. You're you know damn nasty. Around. You're nasty. You're damn nasty. Nah, I have started. No shoes inside. You come your yeah. shoes outside. Yes. You I come to my home, you leave your shoes outside. I feel it's more of a Caribbean thing. It's no, like it's not a Caribbean thing. Well, well, the, the shoes. Yeah. The shoes is a Caribbean thing and it's an Indian thing. Indian people don't allow you with mm -hmm. your shoes at the house. Right? Mm -hmm. But 
right? You you can't go to someone whom an uh, Indian whom I'm walking with your shoes. That is not allowed. That is disrespect. And some religious places. Right. Well, well, I'm not going to tell you that one. You don't go to a, a mosque or a temple and whatnot with your shoes. I mean, church, you go with your shoes. But we know not to do that. You can't wear, wear your shoes inside of the temple. You have to leave it outside of the temple. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is the children who are seeing this on television. Now, remember, even I'm not, I'm not justifying it. These children who are making a movies or, or a television show, they are in a set. A control environment. A control environment. Mm -hmm. So they can afford to walk on the carpeted floor and go straight on the bed or a vinyl floor or whatever. As a matter of fact, most of the floors there is wood because they'll always have to sweep them up. And they could go on the bed because the shoes was not outside on the dirt, walking through the filth, mm -hmm. touching feces and coming on your bed. But... You're training children to go on your bed with your shoes. That is damn nasty. I feel like if you like to wear shoes in your house or some sort of slippers, you should get an inside slippers and an outside And have that by your doorway. Yeah. Yeah. And have, but COVID would have taught people that by everybody going back to normal. Eh? You know. <laughs> they forget everything. They right. Right. I so, still have my sanitizer before you come inside. Right. So a person now who have who making love and a woman in a heels is something that looks sexy. But that's not the heel she walking on the road from with. That is the heel that she put on to, to embellish whatever she's doing. And a lot of people don't know why they wear heels in movies. You know? They wear it to hide the old nasty corn and thing they have on their foot. Or they have an ugly looking foot. That's why they wear heels. I should have said feet because it's not one <laughs> foot they were talking about. Some of you just focus on a foot. Don't put your foot there, me. I don't know where your foot has been. Oh don't touch God. me with your feet. Them <laughs> toes looking good, boy. <laughs> and if you enjoy sucking toes or kissing feet, why would you want a smelly foot or a dirty foot near your mouth? Obviously, you should have the person wash yeah. their feet properly. Sure. Correct. Sure. Do sure. yeah. and uh -huh. Don't walk with your bare feet from there to the bed and expect that that would be done. So personal hygiene plays an important part in things that you want to do. Now, in the heat and passion of the moment, and this is something that happens to a lot of us, mm -hmm. making love, you're penetrating, you have the body moving in and out and whatnot, the penis going into the vagina, the feet is up by your, your face, all of a sudden you turn a, a toe going in your mouth. <laughs> so if the woman doesn't oh do a pedicure, God. and on a need to uh, toe jam and whatnot, what's going to happen to you? I'm fungus. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't do it, I'm like, so you don't come from gym, you ain't even show anything, but you're going on our session. Oh, girl, you're looking good, sweaty, and you know, I'll come from mm -hmm. around here. Like no, well, if that, is your, if that is your cup of tea, by all means, go ahead and do it. And I understand what fetishes are all about. But I'm sure you're not going to be doing that every day of the week. Mm -hmm. You will do that on a one-off. Right? But I'm talking about general personal hygiene, where a person must take care of his or her health, odor, appearance, Smell, if I go to make love to you and mm -hmm. I my nose come by your hair and it's smelling like you yeah, wash your hair in a, a million years, mm -hmm. how would I want to make love to you? No, it'll be below and look past and say, That is the fetish. That is the that is the exception to the rule. Of course we have no it have that. But I know if I get a bad scent from a woman's mouth, mm -hmm. I no longer want to be near you. And if I don't want to be near you to talk with you. We definitely ain't going to go in bed. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. How that going to happen? Because and I'm generalizing here. If you get that odor from the woman, from her mouth, how would you even think about going to bed with her? Yeah. Because you have to kiss at some point. And if the mouth is not taken care of, imagine the rest of the body. Well, this is this is the <laughs> this is the point I wanted. To, I hope it, you're hoping you pick up on it. <laughs> if. The mouth could smell like a toilet. What that vagina smelling like? And it don't mix the in us. Horrible. Right? <laughs> so if you're not aware that you have bad breath, that you could run people with your mouth, right? That a bouncy fly flying near your mouth, you could do so at reverse. <laughs> and wait for it to open your mouth. <laughs> what do you expect? Right. You expect me to have a conversation with you? It's not going to happen. But I'm not... I'm, I'm not making this about me, but I'm talking about when I say me, I mean generally everybody out there who are listening, who are part of the audience, that you encounter somebody like this, it is not going to be a fruitful, com a comfortable conversation. 
So how would I be thinking about going one step further? And you might be, say, that man looking real good, but I want to go to bed with him. Oh, she looking real nice. And everything about him is a turn off. So covering all those areas and understanding that it starts with you from the moment you get up, even the when, before you get up, when you go to sleep, the things that you have to do again, brushing your teeth, taking care of your personal hygiene, having a shower because you're out all day or whatever, you would have sweat for the entire day, accumulate dead cells and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know what I call ring around the bathtub? No. Okay. If you bathe in a bathtub mm -hmm. and you soap your skin and the water accumulates and then it goes down, there's always a ring that is formed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Ring around the bathtub. But didn't you just wash your skin with soap and water and you clean? I honestly feel like if you take a bath, you should take a shower after because you're just soaking in your filth. But I'm not. I'm talking about. I'm talking about that ring, right? Mm -hmm. The reason for that ring is because of all the dead cells and whatnot that comes off, of the filth that comes off of your body. So today the the dark spot might be lightish gray. Tomorrow when you shower again, it might be a little darker gray. And not because of the accumulation, but because of what comes out of your body. Because not, not every two days. And then we have Sahara dust. Now, you know, it has been proven that in the Sahara dust, they have found animal filth in it. Really? Yeah. That's how dangerous that dust is. That is from the Sahara Desert. It's crossing the ocean and coming here. Picking up things on it. All it well, it picks it up from the desert itself. You feel the desert don't have animal defecating? What if you live in it? Defecating the sand is one buried and say, no sir, that's really that. It's like, let it go, Trinidad. Free shipping. Free shipping. Fly down to Trinidad. So the Sahara dust is a filthy thing. You have that, you breathe it in. It's on your skin. You can't tell me you walking through. Now, I could, I, I could prove this to you. In the morning when you get up and you watch outside in Trinidad, you'll see a haze. Mm -hmm. That is Sahara dust. You pack up your car, you just wash it, you pack up your car, you do so. Dust. dust. <laughs> your dust inside your room and your house and what that, you do so after an hour, dust. Mm -hmm. It's microscopic dust mm -hmm. that has flown thousands of miles from the Sahara into Trinidad and the Caribbean. But I'm talking about Trinidad. <clears throat> that bring in all kind of thing, you know. And dust and water is to the most powerful Things, that eh? coming from Africa with everything that it pick up in the desert. So animal defecation in the desert is not in a toilet bowl and it's flush. It's on the floor of the, de the, the desert. So that's why there's feces in the dust. It doesn't only have to be um, feces. It could also be decomposing animals as well. Correct. Correct. So there's so many things that you can get from that. Dead particles, mm -hmm. mites, mm -hmm. microscopic organ organisms that are coming onto you. You go and you shower after being out all day. You go in bed. You wake up in the morning. You do your morning hygiene. And then you go out and do what you have to do. You meet your partner again. You don't, you don't shower every time you meet your partner or, or wash the area every time you meet your partner. But there are things that you must do in order to interact in order to interact with your partner your friend your girlfriend your boyfriend and there are things that you will do when you come home when it comes to that interaction also you must be able to do those things and when you have that interaction it must be comfort now we don't stop to think that the person didn't wash their hands you might be a mechanic you might be somebody who repairs tires Tires touch the ground 100% of the time. And it picks up everything that is on the road. From dead dog, go back. And you come by me to change the tire. I'm not going to tell you, wash the tire first. I take all the tire, do what I have to do, put it back on and yeah. go on. And I hold my sandwich and I eat it. I forget to wash my hand. No, no, no. It's mm. important to wash right. before But that same hand, I would want to touch my lover or touch a person with it. What is that going to do? Transference of germs, bacteria, poor personal hygiene. That is what I'm trying to get across. And it will prevent some of the STIs we are seeing. It will prevent some of the guys getting an infection. It will prevent a lot of things. 
But then again, you know, I was I, I watched a video recently where this guy walking and he, he has his finger on the um, wire like this, you know, the, the nice thing that we like to do, and he go on and he, he hold any railing and he, everything he yeah. do. He, and when he go home and he, he can love his girlfriend, she's sucking his finger. Mm. <laughs> You don't know who passed and touched that, what passed and touched that. What blew on it and stick? What other people touch and touch that. Create a whole new virus right there. (laughs) (laughs) A whole new mutation. (laughs) So, when we are faced with these things, we must understand that the responsibility is ours. The information is out here. I'm not telling anybody anything new here. I am just the vessel by which to send out the information. Now, some people are critical of me when I have you all there. Um, they, 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 they come to their own conclusion. Some persons are critical of me because of my age. Some persons are critical of me because of my race. Some persons are critical of me because of my religion. Some people are critical of me because of my spirituality. There are, there are many reasons that people will find to criticize me. But my mandate and my job is to provide the information. Forget the messenger. Take the information and run with it. Take the information that I am giving to you and be able to use that information in a positive way. Better yourself. Better yourself and your environment and you'll see how much positivity comes out of it. That's what we need to do. We need to find the positive in the things that are being told, the things that are being said, how we put it across and how we can apply it to our own lives. It doesn't matter if I have two sexy women next to me. It doesn't matter, you know, some people ask what race they is, where they're from, what co- What does what? that matter? Does it change anything? Maybe we change the perspective of things. Because if you are interested, only interested in why is she touching your shoulder, why this one, it means to say you have an interest in me that you are jealous of what she's doing, or maybe you think you should be doing that instead of her. But that is how I interact. That is what I do. I don't, I'm, I'm not fake. I wouldn't pretend that I'm one way and I'm another way. I am this, I'm this kind of person. I've, I've been doing this for 25 years openly. So if it bothers you, don't watch. But if you are watching, and if you are on the YouTube channel, like, share, press the bell, subscribe, that's what you have to do. Build it. Pass it on to other people to look at. Let them know they're going to get this information. Let them know that if they join me on all the social media platforms, Dr. Raj, the sexologist, D-R-R-A-J-T-H-E-T-H-E-S-E-X-O-L-I-G-I-S-T. Dr. Raj, the sexologist. You can get me on any platform. And then you will be able to follow the things that I'm saying. If you go on my TikTok, I have about a hundred and something. Look at all, because there's information in every one. And when you look like, don't just take my information for free. Give me back something. What do you give me back? You give me back when you like, and you give me back when you comment. Of course, there are some negative comments. There are some persons, as, as I said, who are critical of me. Some persons will say, hey, old man, shut up. But you have my knowledge, so you can't tell me shut up. You still live in any dark ages, and you are done. As far as I concerned. Because if you don't like my information, then don't watch. Some people are very mm-hmm. ignorant and they feel that like they know best. So whenever somebody comes out and says something and it is not what they agree with, they throw a tantrum, basically. Well, I was listening to Sadhguru and he said that when you are right and you are arguing, you know you're being logical. But the person who is wrong and they're arguing, they think they're logical also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you, you just endorse in a fool, leave them alone, and then just stay quiet. Don't think that um, keep on giving you information because you can lead a horse to the water. Well, you can't make a drink, drink correct? Right? <laughs> but for years I've been on radio. I've been on radio, this is my 23rd year. And I recall that some people say, ban me from the radio, but every night they're listening. That's how they know so to if say you, that. <laughs> if you ban me, how would you be entertained? What entertainment are you going to get in your life? I am important to you. You're important to me, of course. All my all my fans and listeners, whether they're critical or they they, they praise me, they're still important to me. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I must because say. Because you could use that criticism to better better myself. Yeah. But then I could also use that criticism to end this video by telling you, 
take my information, join all my social media plat platform, and do what's best. Use it to your ability and make you a better person. That's at the end of the day. If you become a better person because of me, isn't that a blessing to me? So thank you for spending this hour with us. And on Mondays, we'll try to do a one hour live. As long as I'm around, I'll be able to do that. Other than that, have a wonderful week. Take care.